Now this year in 2023, the world focus will be the classical Hindustani instrumental music of North India. Now in previous videos, we have discussed um, the instruments and you also had assignments on the melodic instruments. So we can quickly go through that, but that is not what I'm going to concentrate on in this video. The important thing that you have to know about North Indian music, world music, is that Indian music, you will always have a drone instrument, you will always have a melodic instrument, and you will always have a rhythmical instrument. So you went through the drone instruments, the melody instruments like the sitar, the sarot, that's the instrument that sounds a lot like the human voice, the sarangi, um, you went through the Bansuri, that is the transverse flute. And then we had the tabla. Okay, So we always have a drone, a melody and a rhythm. But today I'm going to concentrate on the scale first. So let's discuss the scale. You know by now that in the, the Cambridge um, syllabus and the, the notes, all the italic things you have to know. So let's look at the scale, the mode, the melody. Like in Western music, the Indian scale is also heptatonic. That means I've got seven basic pitches. The name of the pitches are identified by these syllables known as the sargam. So um, if I think of Western music, I can talk about the tonic sol, fa, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti. Okay. And this in Indian, I have sa, ri, ga, ma, pa, da, ni, sa. But there's something different than um, what, we that what we find in the Western scale. Um, in notes in the Western scale, you can make a sharp, you can make every note a sharp or a flat or a natural. And the same in Indian scale, it can also be altered with the exception of the note sa, so that's the tonic, the first degree, and pa, the fifth degree, which are never altered as they are thought to be pure. That I find a lot in world music, um, that that fifth, in, fifth interval is pure. So sa you will never change, and pa you will never change. Um, and there we have the word for pure, sud. It's also italic, so it is important that you know that. As for the concept of the tonic in Western tonality, the sa first degree is relative and can be pitched anywhere. So where the vocalist or the instrumentalist, where they decide where the pitch will start, that is sa. The words ri or the notes ri, ga. Da, ni, can be flattened. If I flatten something, it's like putting a flat in front of it. Or if I have a sharp note, um, making it a natural, I call that kumal. And the note ma can be sharpened, producing tivra ma, resulting in 12 tones in an octave. So sa cannot be changed, pa cannot be changed. Okay. Ra. Ri, ga, da, and ni. So two, three, six, and seven can be flattened. And the note ma, that's the subdominant, um, the fourth degree, can be sharpened. Tivra ma, resulting in 12 tones in an octave. So take a pencil and write it out for you. And also do some research how they show this flattened note and the sharpened note. With these tones, a raga can be constructed. Now, in Indian music, a raga is more than just a scale. It's also a melody. This is the basic of, basis of the Indian melody is the raga. It is a scale having five notes or more. So in Indian music, you have a scale of five or more notes in ascending or descending format. But it's also more than a scale, as a rag 
comprises recurring motivic melodic, melodic movements and strong tonal centers. So it is more than a scale, it's like your melody. Moreover, ragas have extra musical associations such as moods, time of the day, seasons of the year. A chat is a fixed composition based on a specific raga. During a performance, it's often varied through improvisation. So you've got a lot of italic words here that you need to know. In notes, let's also go through my notes. A raga is the scale telling the performer what notes to perform. A raga is a cross between a scale and a melody, usually containing between five to seven notes, which should be memorized by the musician. There are hundreds of ragas. Every raga has specifications on which note to use and how to use them. The mood of a raga is linked to the time of day or night, the season or special occasion it should be played at and expresses the temperaments and characteristics of the god or goddess it is named after. So they name the ragas. Each rag has a particular ascending and descending pattern. So we've got motivic material. They are never written down. And the raga is learned by imitating the teacher, the guru, and memorizing the oral tradition. Common techniques used in the melody, in that this is how you identify Indian music, is that pitch bending, glissandos, rapid scales, and ornamentation. So if you do your, um, your, your essay for this week, Look at the words that I have there as well. As I mentioned the chat, I just want to show you where um, that fits in. It is important this year that we know the structure and the form of Indian music. So we've got the alap, the opening section. And in uh, the following videos, we will also discuss that again. So we've got that slow introduction. And it shows off the notes and the mood of the rag. And it's in introduced against a drone. So I've got a sitar, usually, and a drone. And I've got no, no percussion, no rhythmical element there. So that's the alap. Then I have the yor. It's the middle section where I have more of a pulse. The section is slightly faster. And the tabla does not feature here. Okay. But if if it plays, it has a simple pattern and then the clear pulse is introduced. And then before the closing section, I have the chat, if it's a song or a bandish, played by sitar, tambura and tabla. So all the instruments that you have there, the drone, the melody and the rhythmical instrument, moderate to fast, the tabla enters playing the tala, memorized melody sections and players improvise. Then I've got the yala, the fast final section. This is when the tabla joins, player joins. Okay, the musicians improvise in both rhythm and melody. And I've got call and response. The music becomes more virtuosic and decorative. Cascades of scales and intricate rhythms. So there I find the chat again. And you know by now that I love the Dr. Smith method. So if I need to give reasons why I say this is Indian music, I always talk about the D, the drone and the decorative. I talk about the dialogue, the rhythm. We're going to discuss just now the talas and the scale, the ragas. And the scale I call a sargam. And there I have the words or the notes names again. Okay. And it can start on any note. Okay. The music has tones even smaller than a semitone called microtones and a small group of performers. Okay. So we know that the melody is all important. Now let's go to the rhythm. I also want you to work through the time cycle. The concept of time in Hindustani music is tal or tala in which cycles of beats, matras, are divided into groups of short and long sections, vibhaks. The matras of the 16-beat tala is made up of four vibhaks, 
of four beads each. So that's something that you have to understand. Hand gestures such as claps or a wave of the hand help to mark the division of the cycle. So there we see example one. So we clap, two, three, four, clap, thumb, bum, bum, wave, thumb, bum, bum, clap, bum, bum, bum. The standard sequence of beats that defines a tala is known as teka. So the standard sequence of beats I call teka. The drum syllabus in the teka, which are called balls, okay, and that's onomatopoeic words that imitate the sound of different strokes on the tabla. And that's that da din din da da din din da da tin tin ta ta din din da da. So you've got a lot of um, terms that you need to understand here. In the Hindustani music system, a fairly large number of tala, so that's rhythmical cycles, exist. Um, with the 16 beat tintal, we know what the tintal is now, okay? being the most common tala. It's divided into four groups of four beats marked by three claps and a wave, kali meaning empty beat. The first beat called the sum, so the first beat, on one, the sum, five will be sum, nine will be sum, 13 will be sum, is the most important beat in all metrical cycles. Not all compositions begin on the first beat of the rhythmical cycle, nor does every single line of a composition have to fit exactly into the full length of the cycle. The sum is often played with emphasis to mark the beginning of this cycle. Instrumentalists must have a good knowledge of the structure of the different talas so as to be able to come into the first beat with a drummer. In Hindustani music, the term referring to the steep speed or tempo in which the tala is set is laya. Okay, with vilam bit being slow, madhya medium, and drut fast. So here you have quite a few um, terms that you need to summarize and learn. Let's get back to my um, notes. Talas. The tal is a repeating rhythmical cycle usually played by the tabla, the small drums. It usually has between 6 and 16 beats. The beats are grouped into small sections within the pattern. Each beat is called a matra. The matras are grouped into patterns called verb hugs, similar to bars in music, Western music. The first beat of a cycle is called the sum. This important reference point marking beginnings and endings of improvisations. So that is the first beat. So if I have 16 beats, it, it's that one. The tala is marked with hand claps, usually at the beginning of each vipark. The weaker third vipark is marked with a wave known as kali. Talas are also taught by ear using a series syllable sound called balls. That's that dun tan tan tan. Each syllable represents a different sound. So you see that I also in, in the Cambridge music that sum is not every every beginning of every bar. Like I just mentioned, I was wrong. It's just that first number one is sum. Okay, so here we have a clap, clap, wave, clap. You must know. Um, what they call this. Tintal is the most common tal. It has the following characteristics. 16 beats, four sections beginning on the first. I know now first is sum. Okay? And first nine and 13 beats. It's common to mark tala by hand claps and waves. In tintal, the beginning of the first, second and fourth sections is marked by a clap. And then I have a wave. And make sure that you also know the names, okay, the italic names that I see on the Cambridge notes. Also make sure that you know when the drum section will start in my three parts performance. Right in the beginning, it's very important that in Indian music you always have a drone, a rhythm and a scale. So good luck with your studying for this week. Concentrate on the melody and the rhythm.